Welcome to the Medicaid Enterprise Certification Toolkit training video. The toolkit, or MECT, was first introduced in 2007 as a help for states as they progress through their Medicaid IT systems development toward certification. The toolkit has been updated to account for recent regulations and the advent of modular certification. It encourages innovation and the introduction of new ideas outside of the traditional Big Bang replacements for Medicaid Management IT Systems, or MMIS. We've broken this training video into three parts. In the first section, we will explain how the latest toolkit differs from the 2007 toolkit. In the second section, we'll tour the toolkit components. In section three, we explain the new certification lifecycle and how a state can transition to it even if it has already begun its MMIS development. We'll also examine how to select the most appropriate checklist set given a state's modular architecture. Let's get started. The biggest change since the 2007 toolkit is the introduction of milestone reviews throughout the system development lifecycle. Every state, regardless of whether it employs an Agile or Waterfall SDLC, goes through a similar set of phases, even if they're called by different names. There is the planning phase, requirements gathering and design, development, test, integration, and operations and maintenance. In the past, CMS has conducted a single final certification review at the end of these phases. With the new certification lifecycle, CMS will conduct additional milestone reviews after planning and before the system or modules go live. This is so that issues can be identified early in the process when it is less costly and time-consuming to correct them. The updated toolkit is flexible. It accommodates modular development and modular certification. It accommodates COTS usage, software as a service, and outsourcing of Medicaid services staggered development of MMIS modules, Agile and Waterfall SDLCs, and the state and CMS regional offices work together to develop a milestone schedule that fits with the state's project schedule. Another significant change is the expansion of the independent verification and validation contractor role. The IVNV contractor is brought on before a DDI contract is awarded, not afterward. The IVNV contractor will assess progress toward certification using the updated certification checklist. It then prepares reports that it sends to the state and to CMS simultaneously. In order to be truly independent, the IVNV contractor must report to a state agency other than the one managing the MMIS project, and it may not perform software testing. We'll cover IVNV responsibilities later in the video. The certification checklists have been updated to align with MIDA and current standards and conditions and to capture requirements from recent laws and regulations. There are two standard checklist sets that a state may choose from. If a state has aligned its development around the MIDA business areas, then it would select the MIDA business aligned checklist set. If a state has designed modules around more traditional MMIS functions, it would select the MMIS module checklist set. For truly unique or innovative approaches, a state may contact its regional office about creating a customized set of checklists. All checklist sets contain the same criteria. The criteria are simply organized differently. Let's move on to Section 2 of the training and have a look at the toolkit components. There is a welcome document that gives a brief description of the other documents and has release notes to explain updates between MECT 2.0 and version 2.1. The Medicaid Enterprise Certification Lifecycle document contains detailed guidance about the new certification process. There is a diagram of the lifecycle with quick reference sheets, a list of required artifacts for each of the certification reviews, standard wording for states to include in their IVNV RFPs and contracts, the MMIS IVNV progress report template, an MMIS concept of operations template for the state to use if it wishes, 
as well as a MIDAS self-assessment tool that the state can use if it chooses. A table showing how the old 2007 certification criteria map to the new checklist, and a certification request letter template. The new checklist sets are also posted with the toolkit. Let's first look at the certification lifecycle diagram since it gives a big picture view of the new process. This is Appendix A of the toolkit. Across the top are the four lifecycle phases and along the left are the three major roles, CMS, the state and its developers, and the IV and V contractor. The three types of milestone reviews are shown as large vertical rectangles. When any of these activities are clicked, the reader is taken to an at-a-glance sheet. These quick reference pages summarize the purpose of the activity, who is involved, what is expected, and the lower level steps. Greater detail about each activity can be found in the Medicaid Enterprise Certification Lifecycle, or MECL, document. Let's take a look at the MECL. This document covers topics such as the use of COTS products, the importance of a systems integrator and a state program management function, and an explanation of how the life cycle and the APD process fit together. Importantly, this document addresses how a state can transition to the new certification process. This material is found in Section 1.9. Other sections include roles, details about the activities we just saw in the workflow diagram, coverage of the checklist, and finally, how to prepare for a milestone review. The next document in the toolkit is the list of required artifacts for each of the milestone reviews. In this column is a list of the document names. The next column shows the minimum necessary elements in the document. Note that this is only the minimum CMS requires. The state may require more. Also, waterfall and agile methods call documents by different names. We've tried to account for this. An example is the schedule, which could also take the form of milestones with a burndown chart. The last three columns show for which milestones each artifact is required. Next in the toolkit is the standard language for including in IVNV acquisition documents such as RFIs, RFPs, contracts, and contract modifications. This document is in MS Word format so that the state can easily copy the language into its own procurement templates. The wording should be included as written. Keep in mind, this is what CMS requires of the IVNV contractor. The state may make additional requirements. For example, extend the scope beyond certification and well into operations and maintenance. However, the state may not hire the IVNV contractor to also do software testing. True independence must be maintained both technically and managerially. So, the IVNV contractor cannot report to the same state entity that manages the MMIS project. And, since the IVNV contractor will be reviewing the performance of the software testers, it cannot perform that role. A state may choose to hire a separate quality assurance contractor to perform software testing. The last section delineates the scope of the IVNV reviews to include project management and technical inspections. CMS understands that this is a significant change from the way IVNV has been handled in the past and is allowing time for states to adjust contracts and plans. The regional offices will be looking for this language when they review states IVNV contracts. The MMIS IVNV progress report template is what the IVNV contractor and CMS use to track progress towards certification. The report is divided into two major sections, one for the IVNV contractor to fill out, including Appendix A. The second is for CMS to include its comments. The project management critical success factors are found in Appendix A. The technical critical success factors are located in the checklist. The completed checklists are appended to the report before it is submitted to CMS and the state. On to the next toolkit component, the MMIS Concept of Operations template. This has been included in the toolkit as a courtesy to states, which may or may not choose to use it. Appendix F is a MITA self-assessment scorecard that a state may find helpful when doing its self-assessment. States are encouraged, though not required, to use it. 
Appendix G has been included to help states that have been working from 2007 certification criteria. It maps the 2007 criteria to the new checklist. The certification request letter template is provided for states to use to request a final certification review. Note that there is a section for the state to include tailored information. For example, if an operational milestone review revealed issues that needed to be remedied before certification, this is where the state would explain to CMS how those issues were resolved. Now that we've seen the toolkit components, let's go to Section 3, where we'll look at key activities in the new life cycle and consider how a state can transition to the new process. In the toolkit, the new certification life cycle is shown from beginning to end, but many states are already in the middle of upgrading their systems. Not to worry. A state that has already begun its journey will work with its regional office to determine at what phase it will transition into the new process. We will give an example after explaining how the new life cycle accommodates different types of modular development. States are free to develop their MMIS modules either all together in a Big Bang fashion or in staggered sets of modules. In a Big Bang arrangement, CMS would review the state's plans in the Project Initiation Milestone Review. The state then proceeds with developing the modules and they all progress through the remaining milestone reviews together. In a staggered release case, CMS would review the state's plans for all of its modules and the release schedule during the project initiation milestone review. After that, the state proceeds with its staggered development. In this example, the state has a cohort of two modules traveling together through the milestone reviews. The state could request a certification review for its first cohort of modules and start collecting the O&M FFP for them after six months of operation or it could wait until the other cohort of modules has cleared operational milestone review and has been in operation for six months, then have CMS perform the final review on all the modules at one time. The process is very flexible. These kinds of high-level milestone review plans are decided between the state and CMS during the very first activity in the new life cycle. The first activity in the life cycle is an informal consultation that the state initiates with the CMS regional office, where the state shares with CMS its thoughts about updating its MMIS. This consultation occurs before any PAPD is submitted because early feedback from CMS can prevent a lot of rework for the state later. Three things happen during the consultation. First, the state and CMS decide upon a preliminary high-level schedule for milestone reviews based on the state's plans up to that point. This enables the state to build the milestone reviews into its project schedule. Secondly, CMS and the state decide how frequently the MMIS IVNV progress reports will be generated. At a minimum, they must be generated quarterly, but some projects may warrant more frequent reports. This report schedule is decided during the consultation activity so that the state can include this information in its IVNV RFIs and RFPs. Thirdly, the state makes its preliminary checklist set selection. This consultation session gives CMS a chance to counsel the state about which checklist set fits best with the state's planned MMIS architecture. So how does a state select an appropriate checklist set? Let's take a look. This is an example case. This state is architecting its solution into these modules. Pharmacy, provider management, fraud and waste detection, partner management, financial management, and so forth. Given the checklist in the two different sets, which is a better fit for this particular state? Remember, both sets have the same criteria. They are simply arranged differently. The standards and conditions for Medicaid IT and MITA technical and information architecture checklists are used regardless of which set a state chooses. Notice that the state has a pharmacy module. There is no pharmacy checklist in the MITA Align checklist set. That indicates that the pharmacy criteria are scattered throughout the checklist in the MITA set. If the MITA set were chosen, it would be difficult for the state and for CMS reviewers during milestone reviews because evidence would be mapped within many checklists. 
Notice that the state also has a beneficiary enrollment module, a third-party liability module, and a fraud and waste detection module. These match nicely with the MMIS sets member enrollment, program integrity, and third-party liability checklists, and so on. Overall, the better overlap is with the MMIS set of checklists. Another key activity is the IAPD submission. The toolkit does not alter the APD process, but it does explain how the certification process and the APD process overlap. The state does not submit its IAPD until after it has received the IVNV contractor's IVNV progress report. This allows the state to remedy any issue issues before it submits the IAPD. The project initiation milestone review is held within 30 days of the IAPD submission. Approval of the IAPD itself does not depend upon the project initiation milestone review. What about transitioning a state that is already mid-flight through its MMIS development? As mentioned previously, Section 1.9 of the MECL document covers these cases. Table 2 gives examples of states in different phases of development and the kinds of adjustments necessary to integrate them into the new life cycle. For example, what if a state already has a DDI contract in place and is well into development and testing? This is case number 4 in the table. That state would not be required to undergo a project initiation milestone review, but its modules would need to undergo the operational milestone review before going live. The state will need to review the certification checklist and make sure all the requirements are accounted for in its plans. The state may find that as a result it needs to modify its contracts or update its IEPD. The state will also need to update the IVNV contract to include the standard IVNV language required by CMS. This is just one example. States are encouraged to talk with their regional offices to plan their transitions to the new life cycle. All states, regardless of whether, where they fall within the life cycle, must ensure that their MMIS meets the criteria in the new certification checklist. To recap, in Section 1, we reviewed the key differences between the 2007 Medicaid Enterprise Certification Toolkit and the updated toolkit, such as updated checklists, the expanded role of the IVNV contractor, and a flexible life cycle that incorporates milestone reviews throughout development and not just at the end. In Section 2, we toured the toolkit's components. And in Section 3, we examined how the new life cycle accommodates different styles of modular development, a couple of key activities in the new life cycle, selecting an appropriate checklist set, and transitioning to the new certification life cycle. We hope that this video has been helpful, and we encourage you to visit our Frequently Asked Questions page at the Medicaid.gov location shown on the screen.